All right, so we'll get started. Thank you all. I know this is the last talk of the day, so I'll try my best to make this interesting. And uh, I'm Peter. I'm the co-founder of Karate Labs, which is founded on an open source project called Karate, uh, which has been around for five years. And I'll talk a little bit about Karate, just set a little bit of context. It's an open source project that unifies API and UI automation. It has this very interesting mix of a few capabilities, API testing, API mocking, API performance testing. That's actually quite cool. You can actually take your functional test flows and automatically turn them into performance tests. And we do UI testing, but today we're going to focus a little bit on API testing, of course. Uh, the reasons why Karate is actually used by 37 of the Fortune 500 companies, and you know some of our users are actually in the audience right now, is because of these particular capabilities, these differentiators. Uh, I'll leave you to read out, uh, read, read all of them, but if I were to call out a couple that really uh, I want to highlight, uh, parallel execution is one of them. You know, there are very surprisingly very few test automation frameworks that do uh, parallel execution well, uh, and Karate gives you the reports at the same time. Um, and collaboration via Git, right? There are quite a few test automation options that force your development team to use another user interface. Your tests are not in Git. Uh, you don't get the advantage of you know, pre-commit test, testing by a developer. Uh, and you know, your developer friction and experience suffers a little bit. Anyway, for today's session, I really want to deep dive into the, these aspects. Um, workflows. API workflows, and I'm actually quite big on API workflows, and I'll explain that more. And the built-in HTML reporting of Karate, uh, which is out of the box, you don't need to integrate another tool. Uh, we're going to talk about how that applies to uh, today's topic, which is uh, how can we reuse Open API for test automation? And Open API has a few challenges, I would say, when it comes to test automation, which is, uh, if you look at an open API specification, it's actually a list of endpoints, but there's not enough information about how you sequence those endpoints to actually do meaningful uh, work on behalf of an end user. So, and of course, if, if some of your flows of API invocations actually span multiple open API files, that's pretty much you know, a different conversation altogether. There are things that are hard to express using JSON schema. One of them is cross-field validation. Simple data type validations are easy, but the moment you have a rule like field A should depend on field B, you know, that's, that's hard. Now, we're going to talk about how we generate mocks from open API. Uh, and by default, because as I said, the, the amount of information is a little lacking in open API to generate a realistic dynamic mock, uh, what you ideally need is you know, a variation of the response based on request data or varying the response based on state, right? You should get back data that perhaps you sent in as one of your first requests to your API, things like that. So, this, and you know, by the way, if, you're, uh, if you want to look at the source code, it's on GitHub. Um, this is an example of a karate test. I won't explain all of that. Of course, there's a lot of documentation as open source. If you haven't seen karate before, uh, you can go and check it out. But there's one thing about this test, and yes, this test is the infamous pet store example, but I have a complex example coming up. But uh, the key thing about this test is that uh, there are multiple API calls being made. Okay, you can see five, and this is actually a real-life, you know, full cycle of a, a transaction on one particular entity or resource. And Karate is quite good at that. You can think of, you can see how easy this is to read. It's like one eyeball um, of your actual end-user flow. And as I said, the report that comes along with it uh, is quite rich. Uh, I'll actually show you a live, you know, uh, play uh, video. I mean, I'll show you a recording of this. This is how you run a test. Actually, there's a Visual Studio Code plugin which makes it f 
far easier for developers to onboard. You've run a test, at the, you, you click one link, you get the HTML report. And, and this is the key thing. Um, in fact, if I, I'll, I'll pause the video there, which is um, the HTML report contains all the information about the HTTP traffic that occurred at that point. And this, uh, of course, is quite useful. And it, you can see that this is available for every single API call that you made. So at the end of the day, what, what you're seeing here is that you have you know, a, a report that tells you what were the calls made, what data was passed, what did you get back. And it reads really well from top to bottom as an end user flow. I mean, that's what you should be doing when you're doing tests, which is simulating what your actual end users are experiencing when they are going through your application. Now, you must be wondering behind the scenes, um, where did the, where was the server? It was a mock server in this case, generated from an open API specification. And the key thing here is that there is a way, Karate has a capability where you can actually customize the mock to return data based on custom rules that you can actually express. And it's pure JavaScript. You know, by the way, you can see this file starts at line number one. There's no boilerplate. There's no require and import statements and so on. But what we're doing is we're keeping all data in memory in, in a kind of a session object. Uh, we have rules. And you need to write the rules that only you care about. right? By default, you get canned responses. You'll get hard-coded examples coming back from your open API spec. But the moment you want to customize saying, hey, uh, if I made a post of a pet, I should get that pet back in the next call. This is how you do it. You can look up the state, simple JavaScript. And of course, since this is JavaScript, you can write if-then conditions to your heart's content. And as long as how far you're willing to go, you can actually write rules. Now, I said, you know, that was the pet store. So how about some real life <coughs> complexity? And I just picked up this example is out there as in, in the public domain. Uh, it's UAS, stands for unmanned airspace and, and drones and so on. I believe NASA uses this. So uh, think of this open API spec as something like that rocket scientists use. And I've highlighted the number of lines in this open API spec. No surprises, almost 4,000 lines of code. And this is like a, a day in the life of someone who, someone who works with open API, right? They are tremendously verbose, lots of YAML and so on. But I've taken one example. And what I'm going to do is um, this is a karate test where we are expressing the request payload. Okay? Think of the request in a karate test as like, uh, an example section of an open API spec on steroids. You can do anything you want. And what we are going to do is actually you have two values, altitude lower and altitude upper, which are numbers. And we have a rule that the lower altitude should be always numerically less than you know, the other number. And the way that we write the mock, yeah, those are the two numbers in the request payload. And we're going to implement a validation on the server side that any request coming in should be validated with this rule. Um, yeah, and of course, that's the path that we are writing a hook for. And we want that error message to actually come back uh, if the validation fails. And yeah, that's the rule written in very simple JavaScript that, yeah, lower value, the altitude lower should be numerically less than or equal to that. So we're going to run the test. Before that, we start the mock. The mock starts up on port 8090. And our karate test is set to hit port number 8080, 8090. Keep in mind, everything's on local host. This whole thing would run without my network cable, which is kind of good. Uh, so we had two scenarios. You'll see the two scenarios in a moment. But one of them failed with the exact error message that we were expecting. And if I open the HTML report, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, two scenarios. One was designed to pass, one failed. And what we're going to do now is actually make uh, this test pass. So you'll see how easy is it to have that feedback loop, right? You go, you're going to make changes to either your mock or your test. Here we're making a change to the, mock, to the test. We're fixing that problem by, by making the numbers 
line up, yeah, that makes the 300, so it's greater than 200, rerun the test. It's one click using our plugin, which is, we have a plugin for IntelliJ also, by the way, so this is Visual Studio Code that you're seeing, and the test would pass. Okay, so with that, um, let me hand it over to Eric, um, you know, from Disney Streaming Services, and the reason Eric is here is, you know, um, we would like you to hear about, you know, our actual users and their experience. And Eric is going to talk about, you know, choices of test automation frameworks and so on. So with that, over to you, Eric. Sure. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm Eric, and for the past decade, I have specialized in testing back-end payment systems. And for the, about the past six years, I've worked at Hulu, which is now Disney Streaming. And when I joined, there wasn't a lot of quality engineers at all. It was mostly t uh, developers writing unit tests, some integration tests, and there was the problem of people were breaking prod. <laughs> and it's a problem that you may, have, you may have occurred in your, you know, it may have happened in your life. You may have seen this happen. And what we determined was the best bang for the buck was going to be in us writing API tests. And so I first started writing rest assured, and that was okay, but there's a lot of boilerplate and it was kind of a mess to maintain. And so then when I found out about Karate, that was really exciting for me. And I immediately fell in love with the HTML reports because uh, when stuff broke and it does a lot, I would just diff the JSON and I could see, oh, here's the service. I called service A. Service A gave me a different answer than it did two days ago. And so I would then go to the service A team and said, you broke this service. And I could find out that really easy. And so I, I really liked that a lot. And then uh, we had a bunch of people that um, they reorganized a bunch of mobile testers. And my manager came to me and said, hey, we've got a problem. We've got a uh, half dozen developers that don't know how to write code. And we need them to test backend services. And oh, great. <laughs> I've got a tool that makes it pretty easy for people with very little experience to write tests because it's you can write uh, you could write stuff in just Cucumber and it's all out of the box of giving this URL when you do post then it should be 200 and then if you need help I can do that so I onboarded people who had no experience writing any programming and in a couple months they were writing test automation with that so I'd say that Karate is easy enough for a junior but it has really easy Java interops, so it's advanced enough for a senior or a principal to, to use. And what's great is that now uh, we have dozens and dozens of services, and we actually use common libraries. And so when I want to do something like we want to create a Roku user uh, on this specific bundle and these specific components, it's really easy to use that. And as one service updates, we use a common library that's semantically versioned. And so teams are able to maintain their code and we're able to reuse and add orchestration flows that use dozens of services interacting with each other. And we have a common library that can share that. And so we're actually using Karate in a lot of uh, ways where people might use Python or other sort of glue languages, but it's on the JVM. And it's a lot nicer. So in terms of how we actually write our test plans, uh, so we want to test, test a service, we're going to typically start with the open API spec. And this, these are typically automatically generated on a service. And then we're going to compare that with requirements docs and Jira. We're going to go through use case flows. And then after looking at all of this, the QA is going to say, all right, developer, but how do I actually talk to the service? And can you give me a sample payload? And so then they're going to do that. And based upon all that input, they're going to be able to do these. But uh, before they actually know what to test, we need to be able to prioritize that. The, the question at all times for quality is it's all a matter of prioritization and trying to come up with some heuristic. Because we're always trying to do more with less. We don't have enough time. Everything's trying to get out the door quickly. So how do I know what, I, what to actually work on? How do I prioritize my work effectively? And so one of the, the sort of tricks we use is we're going to cross-reference the open API spec with our APM data on Datadog. And so I can see, and I can look on non-prod, I can look on prod, and I can see, oh, you know, I only need to pay attention to these three endpoints because the others aren't even being called. And so I can, I can do that. So now that I know this is what I want to test, or this is, this is the full spec, and this is the part that I need to care about the most, then what I can do is I can 
actually look at my karate logs and I can cross-reference that with an open API spec and I can see which are the endpoints that I'm actually hitting. So I can see, all right, so if I, I actually hit these endpoints, when I look at the logs, this is what actually was hit. And these are the ones that I didn't hit. And if any of these are on that previous list, then I've got a problem. And then, uh, so this is, this is a tool that I wrote uh, because we want to solve the problem of did we actually test what we wanted to test? We want to understand what the coverage we've actually achieved is. I, I don't know if you've ever had a manager that said, we need to have 100% coverage. <laughs> That's um, typically not a realistic goal, especially when we talk about unit tests. But when it comes to endpoints, 100% coverage is entirely reasonable. Now, there may be some, some legacy endpoints that you want to exclude on this, but when it comes to actual endpoints in use, there's no reason why we can't have 100% API coverage on that. That's very, very reasonable to do. And so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing over the next few months is adding metrics to our data dog so that we understand the coverage that we have on our individual endpoints and know what's missing. And so endpoint coverage is easy to measure, it's easy to compare to APM, and we can get 100% coverage on that. So uh, this is the source code for how to use it, and it, it's there on it. So next steps, as, as I said, we're going to be doing more with our metrics to understand our endpoint coverage. And uh, all this data is tagged by org and repo. And then uh, I'm planning to do more with the Karate API utils. It's based on uh, a base of open source. And so I want to also do a code generator for Karate clients is something that I've, I've sort of beaten into Peter very much. <laughs> something that would be really good to have. And so um, I think it's you now. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Eric. Thanks so much. Uh, so let me summarize. Uh, that's the end of our presentation. You can certainly take questions. Uh, but what we went through is we saw how that we could use Open API in conjunction with testing and with a special emphasis on end user flows. Because in my mind, that's super important. You need to not just hit one API at a time. You really need to sequence flows. And these flows may even span uh, API endpoints that are not even in your control. Typically, you start with an authentication, authorization flow. That's kind of what everybody does, but it can really get complex. Um, you saw how the HTML report that comes out is actually a very useful documentation of the entire flow. Think of it this way. If you, give, if you gave that HTML file to anyone, even a non-developer, they would immediately uh, understand and see you know, what API calls were made, what data was sent, and, you know, yeah, um, what business goal was actually achieved as, as a result of that flow. Uh, we talked about smart mocks, and again, emphasis on the, on the point smart, right? Because these mocks shouldn't be just returning a hard-coded, um, you know, canned JSON. They should actually dynamically respond to your input and more importantly, respond to state. And I personally think that that state you know, concept uh, is the most hard you know, concept with any kind of API. You always have some database behind the scenes, right? And testing all those interactions, right? Does the object already exist? Is object not found? These are the kinds of things that you really, really want to test. These are your non-happy path flows. So you know, these are the things that you know, we, we really try to enable. And of course, Eric talked about, uh, besides his use of karate in an enterprise context, he talked about uh, ideas on how we can actually achieve API coverage. And I totally agree, Eric, that you know, rather than, I, I've, I've been in that position. I've been asked to you know, achieve 100% code coverage early in my career, and that's just ridiculous. But API coverage is so meaningful because you can certainly say, OK, these are my most uh, popular or most uh, commonly used API endpoints, and you can certainly track whether your test coverage is you know, addressing that. Uh, there's a lot of ideas for the future. We are working with Stu and uh, the Travel SIG, uh, and there's a lot of uh, exciting things we are talking about. And even perhaps you know, some of our learnings may feed into the other SIGs, uh, such as the Workflow SIG. Uh, one of the ideas you know, Eric and myself are brainstorming is that can we actually generate open API specifications from your existing test suite, which, might, which, which would be kind of cool, uh, especially for a lot of our enterprise users who are not starting with open API, but have a lot of tests because uh, of five years of tests. And yes, uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of talk about whether the open API specification requires a compliance test suite. 
Uh, that's certainly something we feel that's badly missing. Uh, we would love for contributions. If you have ideas, certainly reach out to me, and we can take a shot at that. So with that, uh, thank you all. That was all we had. Uh, happy to take questions. And you can find us at uh, the Karate Labs booth. Um, and Eric and myself are here for some more time. And you can certainly you know, ask us stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Yes. Absolutely. To, uh, to cut a long story short, possibly one of the solutions right, is you have an extension section in your open API that has the list and maybe some parameterization and all that. It's all up for debate right now. But in the time being, you know, this is a very effective way. You know, without an open, open API spec, you know, it, this would work. right? You're just making a bunch of API calls. Think of the karate test as like a, a scriptab scriptable curl, right? That's all it is. It's like a bunch of API requests. You have full control over what you send and, and so on. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, it's definitely an option. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I want, give me your info. We'll talk after. Yes, certainly. I would also love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Short answer, no. I, I, I haven't thought that far ahead, right? Because, um, and I, I love what you said, right? Even the extent of different response formats, XML versus JSON, right? Those are all the variations that possibly come into play when you think of API coverage. Uh, brilliant. Uh, we, for now, of course, and you know, the teams we work in, typically these teams are like pressed for time. You have to run, you have to write some tests. You can't write all the tests that you possibly want. So it's a question of prioritization. Uh, as of now, yeah, we haven't gone to that extent. It's certainly something you would love to do. Like, for example, if you have information about all the possible parameters, can you do permutations of all of those things? Uh, we're not there yet. Brilliant question. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Any more? Awesome. With that, I think, yeah, last talk of the day. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. <laughs>